Today, we're talking about mysterious ancient engineering, unexplained inventions, and some slightly more recent finds still baffling to scientists in the 21st century. Number 10. Deadly Greek Fire – A Family Secret? Don't consider us wrong, we're not looking for napalm to make a comeback. Still, scientists and historians remain curious about the 7th century Greek fire, a deadly precursor of modern napalm. Ancient Greeks used it to fire from ships that would cling to flesh and was impossible to extinguish with water. It sounds like a pure nightmare. The Byzantine Empire handled it with a plum, but just like Coca-Cola Classic and Bush Baked Beans, the recipe for Greek fire was a preserved family secret. National Geographic pulled the Mythbusters and guessed the ingredients in 2002 using a bronze pump blended with a mixture of light crude oil and pine resin. What happened? It destroyed the ship in minutes. You guessed right. Number 9. Legendary Damascus Steel – Still a Mystery Getting back from the Crusades, a lot of perplexed Europeans gossip about swords of Islamic warriors that could slice through a floating napkin bend 90 degrees and flex back with no damage. Getting back to the 21st century, the recipe for so-called Damascus steel remains a mystery. The best guess is that the blades were made of crucible steel, created by melting iron with plant matter. Still, no one knows the particular type of crucible steel used to yield such a blade. You could see some replicas, but don't know the main secret of its strength. It might as well be a lightsaber. Number 8. The Vonjic Manuscript May Ultimately Be Indecipherable If you still aren't aware of the Vonjic Manuscript from our previous videos, you're in for a treat. Researchers say the bonkers, handwritten and hand-drawn manuscript featuring text in an indecipherable language and hundreds of illustrations was written sometime during the 15th century in Central Europe. Supposedly, a Polish-American antique bookseller named Wilfred M. Vonjic bought it in 1912 by chance. What else do we know about it? Nothing. It's a total mystery. Why? Well, both the language and pictures of plants from the manuscript don't exist on our planet. If it's supposed to help somehow people understand anything, it was a miserable fail. That said, it is one of the not-so-many genuine riddles out there. We suggest you jumping down the Voynich rabbit hole to find out more. Just don't blame us if you lose your mind a little. Number 7. Is the Antikythera Mechanism a Mysterious Astrological Calendar? Unlike the Roman dodecahedra that we will cover later, scientists solved the so-called Antikythera Mechanism puzzle. Found in the bottom of the sea in 1901, the intricate device was likely engineered around the end of the 2nd century BC. It calculated and showed celestial information, particularly cycles such as the phases of the moon and a lunisolar calendar. But we're still not sure who built it, who used it, and what exactly they used it for. One of the biggest mysteries is why is it technically more complex than any known device for at least a millennia afterward? But history shows that similar gear-based technology was around two and a half millennia prior. Any kin of the Antikythera mechanism, like most ordinary bronze objects of the period, was likely recycled into other things. It's still mysterious, just for less compelling reasons than some might think. Number 6. How did Zhang Hing Seismoscope Detect Earthquakes? So, when did we start to predict earthquakes? It appears that the first earthquake detecting tool in history was this ornate, golden, dragon festooned, toad surrounded vessel from approximately 132 AD. So, how does it work? When the earthquakes happen, one of the dragons, each representing principal directions of the compass, would sputter out a ball into a toad's mouth, indicating the direction of the quake. The instrument is believed to have detected a 400-mile distant earthquake which was not observed at the location of the seismoscope. Either that or someone accidentally bumped against it because no one knows what was really inside the original thing to this day. More dragons, maybe? Some say it could have merely been a pendulum-based system, but the exact science remains faded. Number 5. How Vikings Made Their Ulfbert Swords Speaking of insane swords, the Vikings may have used techniques or materials borrowed from Damascus steel creators to make their legendary Ulfbert swords. When archaeologists initially found the Viking blades, they were shocked because the technology needed to produce such pure metal won't appear for another 800 years. 
In 2014, a 9th century Viking grave was located in Scandinavia with Islamic writings meaning to Allah, connecting the two worlds and making the shared knowledge plausible. Well, that's just a guess. The real origin of the blade is still a mystery. Number 4. Why the Iron Pillar of Delhi Won't Rust The more than 1,600-year-old Iron Pillar of Delhi made scientists split conflict about its weird resistance to rust. There are two opinions. Team Environment says the mild climate of Delhi, India is ultimately to thank. Right place, right time, practically. Team Materials declare it's all about the presence of phosphorus, absence of magnesium and sulfur in the iron, and the large mass of the pillar. What unites both opinions? It's wholly a mystery how the rust-resistant iron lumps were forge-welded to produce a massive six-ton structure. Regardless, it's an impressive piece of engineering. Number 3. The Phaistos disc could be a prayer or an ancient typewriter. What's the giant sugar cookie that makes us admiringly head scratch? There are some exciting theories out there. Initially found in 1908 in Crete, this 6 inch diameter clay disc comes from around 1700 BC and contains 241 words created out of 45 individual symbols placed in a spiral. It could be a sort of antique sheet music to a hymn or prayer dedicated to the matriarchal deity. Or maybe it's an ancient proto-typewriter. Who knows? It sure looks delicious, though. Number 2. Roman dodecahedra might be candlesticks. If you believe these little bronze guys would make excellent paperweights or tchotchkes, well, so did the Romans, we suppose. To be honest, no idea from our side. They could have been useless objects designed as decoration, a conversation piece for the 2nd to 4th century Roman for ancient coffee tables. George Hart of Stony Brook University points out that dozens of these 12-sided 4 to 11 centimeter spheroids were found throughout Europe, yet the Romans never mentioned them in their writings. Our modern guesses include candle stands, finger ring size gauges, flower stands, surveying instruments, and even D&D style dice. What if the ancient Romans were stylus and papyrus RPG enthusiasts? Bonus: Stones that appear like wrinkled fabrics. Yet another fantastic engineering tool. Well, not really. Artist Jose Manuel Castro Lopez works with rocks both large and small to convert hard surfaces into gentle fabric-like creases. Each sculpture begins as a usual piece of quartz or granite which he delicately grinds down to reveal particular wrinkle shapes as if the rock has always existed this way. Like optical illusions, the artist's sculptures seem to distort the marble and granite with an incredible ease. Just imagine what our descendants will think when they find them. Hopefully, the internet will never fall. Number 1. It's unclear what the giant balls of Costa Rica were used for. Though, scientists do have a couple of good ideas. Between 200 BC and 800 AD, Costa Ricans used fracture, pecking, and grinding techniques to reduce granodiorite, a sizable igneous stone, into these pleasing spheres. What's mysterious is why they did it. Ultimately, we will never understand since vandals have stolen almost all of them from their original locations, making it impossible to practice theories about their use as calendars or navigational tools. Some gullible vandals even blew the balls up, hoping to find gold in them their balls. They didn't. <laughs>